Mehmet Olcu is a former Turkish diplomat. He joins us live from here in Istanbul to talk further about the Turkey-Russia relationship and how much it can actually provide towards solving the crisis in Syria. Thanks so much for speaking to us. You know, so much of this solution really does rely on these two power brokers, more specifically relying on Presidents Erdogan and Putin. We spoke earlier about how they were mutually complementary toward each other in Moscow, but it's hard to reconcile that with the fact that Russia has failed to honor prior agreements with Turkey, and Turkish troops have now died as a result. What do you make of this complicated relationship? Well, this complicated relationship is a asymmetrical one in which Russia, unfortunately, has the upper hand. If you look at the trade volume, it's greatly in favor of Russia. Then you have the energy relationship in which Turkey buys massive amounts of natural gas, oil, and coal. Then Russia will be building also Turkish nuclear power plant, first nuclear power plant in Akkuyu. And uh, so also S-400, Turkey uh, bought it and not activated yet. It also poisoned relationship with uh, NATO, United States. And wherever you look at it, this is a critical relationship, not only in uh, Syria, but elsewhere. Uh, however, it is not balanced and sustainable. And now, coming to the crisis we have at hand in Idlib, Erdogan, together with his A-team, flew to Moscow and long discussions. We don't know what really had been discussed, except this piece of paper we saw in which uh, the ceasefire agreement deal was brokered. And this is a very positive uh, outcome, I should say, because of the crisis brewing, which will have impact not only lives of Turkish soldiers, civilians, and also the refugees, uh, displaced people uh, from Idlib. Uh, however, the question remains whether this ceasefire will hold. Judging by the past experiences, it lasts for a couple of weeks, months, fitting into the interests of Syrian and Russian armies, and then we have again a breach of ceasefire. And I hope this time it will hold. And also, we have to recognize that the Syrian forces, which rolled back uh, several areas, they made several gains over the past three months, and this deal brokered in Moscow recognizes that actually Syrians will hold to what they have. Then also the control of this critical highway going to Aleppo uh, will be now patrolled by Turkey and Russia. Right. Again, this is another concession, I think, given. However, now what we had in Moscow, I think, will give a breathing space to Russia, Syria, and Turkey to think more rationally about the future steps. Because there is an enormous Turkish military build up there. There is resistance from Syria, Russian reluctance to let Turkey continue build up. And so okay. whether we will reach a solution, it's, I think, still uncertain. What do you say, though, to those who are very suspicious of Russia being master chess players uh, in this game here, able to have it both ways. And I mean, when you hear Russia expressing such what seem like sincere condolences for the dozens of Turkish soldiers killed in regime attacks, how is it possible that Russia had nothing to do with that? How is it possible that they say what the regime does is out of our control? They are in control. Well, if regime is not in control, then why Turkey is signing a ceasefire with Moscow rather than with Damascus? That, and Clearly, that is the question, because nobody, there's a refusal to acknowledge that the regime should play a role in negotiations, which is understandable. But is it ignoring the proverbial elephant in the room? It is so. I think the Russians are playing the go-between as well. But we have to recognize that uh, Assad regime will do nothing without the full knowledge of Russia. So, however, the Turkish side also, for the sake of reaching a sort of a compromise in this crisis position, they turned a blind eye to the responsibility of Russia and tried to de-emphasize it. 
putting all the blame on the Syrian forces. So Syria, I think we have to read Syri uh, the Russian objectives in the region very clearly. It's not only about Idlib of Syria. You, when you look at the Russians, judging by what they have done, east of Ukraine, in Crimea, in Georgia, and Moldova and Baltics, uh, we see a clear indication of a grand scheme of things in their geopolitical chess game, as you mentioned. The Russians, especially Putin, is a master of chess game. So we have to deal with Russia in the same way, not as a hostile power. I think we have to recognize that Russia is a major uh, partner of Turkey to reckon with in many other areas. It's not also Russia versus the West. Turkey has to have balanced relationship with both, but on an equal, sustainable basis. Right now, Russia is playing a, a delaying tactics. We have signed agreements, uh, memorandum of understandings with Russia, but it has not worked so far. Okay. And there is no assurance that it will work this time. So we have to, on the Turkish side, I think, push very hard on that. If necessary, of course, seek support from our NATO allies, okay. US, but not as a uh, pushing uh, Russia to the for to do the sideline. Okay. Still, as you said, Turkey and Russia are the ones who are going to solve this problem this way or another. Mehmet Olcu, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Now